voice and worship him. Lift up your voice and worship him. Let nothing stop you. Let nothing hinder you this morning. Tell him how great he is. Tell him how wonderful he is. Tell him that he's a good God. Let your worship go unto the king. Fill your mouth with choice words unto the king. Fill your mouth with choice words to be offered to the king of glory. Our God is great. Our God is great. We cannot compare him with other gods whom cannot speak, whom cannot move, whom cannot touch, whom cannot change anything. Our God is a great God. He is the creator of everything. He deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. Lift up your voice now and worship him. Surrender unto the Lord. Surrender unto the Lord. Let nothing hinder you. Not the things you have. Not the things you do not have. Don't allow your needs to stand between you and the worship of your God. In the name of Jesus, don't allow your status to hinder you from worshiping Him. Don't allow what men call you hinder you this morning. Worship the Lord someone. Worship the Lord someone. Surrender to the power that is greater than any other. All the other gods, they are the works of men. All the other gods, they are the works of men. But our God is the creator of everything. He was not created, but he created all. He gives life to all. Highly esteem him. Highly magnify him. Highly glorify him this morning. The writer of Hebrews tells us to continually offer the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of our lips, which is our praise unto the Lord. Where is your sacrifice of praise? Where is your sacrifice of praise? Where is the fruit of your lips? Which is praise unto the Lord. Which is praise unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Magnify the Lord. Adore the Lord. Glorify the Lord for all what he has done. For all whom he is. That he alone is God. That he alone is God. He does not share his position. He is not occasional. But he is the all living God. Forever ruling. From generation to generation. The eternal one. Rikaya dalabo zahem. Ripakaya dalabo. Rikaya dalaba laba 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 labu zahem. You alone is worthy. You alone is worthy. You alone you deserve my praise. You alone is worthy. The things you have done. What you have done unto me. No one else can do. The salvation you have given unto me. The gift of eternal life. Ripakaya dalabo. Rikaya dalaba laba labo. If it were not for the Lord, where would we be this morning? If it were not for his love, if it were not for his saving power, we would still be separated from God. We would still be dead in our sins. But for the Lord, but for the Lord, he dealt with our sins forever. You cannot help but praise him. You cannot help but praise him. Be broken before him. Be broken before him. Magnify him. You are highly exalted above the angels, above everything we know. Jesus, Jesus. You said if the disciples will remain silent, then stones will praise you. Lift up your voice and worship him. 
lift your praise unto the Lord, unto the one who sits on the throne, unto the one who is able to save you, to keep you. For we have not made ourselves. He's the one who has made us. He's the one who has saved us. He's the one who has healed us. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. Everything we need, he is able to supply. He has already given it unto us. Jesus, Jesus, we are co heirs together with him. There is nothing that he has kept away from us. He who did not keep his sons from us, what is it that together with him, he will not be able to give you? He can give you your health back, he can give you your hope back, he can give you your business back he can give you your family back this morning is your morning to receive this morning is your morning to receive not just by asking but by praising him you alone is highly glorified there is none who is like unto thee O Lord in this place O Lord show yourself mighty and strong above everyone above everything in the name of Jesus Christ Everything that is not of God, we will not permit it in this place. In the name of Jesus, let everything bow unto the name of the Lord our God, Jesus Christ. In the name that is above every other name. We bless your name, O oh Lord. Thank you for this service. The services to follow. And the services in all our centers, O oh Lord. Show yourself mighty and strong. Do that which men cannot do there. In the name of Jesus, stretch out your hand to save, to heal, to keep. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that all may glorify your name. In the name of Jesus. Receive our worship, Lord. Receive our praises. In the name of Jesus. For you deserve it, O oh Lord. And it is in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that we pray. And the people of the Lord shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout amen. Jesus is Lord. Tell your neighbor there is no other God like our God. Tell someone he alone is great. Glory be to the name of the Lord. He alone is great. No one compares to him. No one can reach his level. There has never been God like him. There will never be one like him. He and he alone is great. Not just now, but in all the ages. Now and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor for me, this is your day. Turn to one on the other side, tell them your miracle will locate you today. Stretch your hands to heaven. Oh, hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and begin to thank God. You came with an expectation, your, expect your expectation will not be cut off. Oh my God, oh my Redeemer. Sadaba Ruba Kasira Mandaraba. We worship you, Jesus. We glorify your holy name. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, in this place. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Master. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for what you have in store for us. Open your mouth and thank you. Has the Lord done anything for you? The month of October is coming to an end. And you can think of all...
celebrate the Lord better. I said celebrate the Lord. And we want to bless our children. I want to ask all the children to come to the front here. We're going to pray, speak a blessing over our children. They are not the church of tomorrow. They are the church of now. Amen. They love the Lord. They know Jesus. They will carry this gospel to every, everyone, their age mates, because they carry the anointing of God. Is that true, children? Say amen. If you know you are blessed by God, now you shout like you, like you believe it. Yes, I like that one. Amen. And the schools have closed. So what will you be doing now? Just stay at home? I think we have a lot of, a lot of programs prepared for you to help you know Jesus, love Jesus, serve Jesus. Every one of you has got a gift and you have a talent. Uh, some of you can dance. I see you dancing very well, but th there are others who are not who are not good in dancing, but they are good in something. So we want everybody uh, to to speak to uh, to the leaders of our children ministry. Tell them what you are good at. Some of you can be uh, maybe good in uh, just. Uh, painting and doing stuff I don't know what you are good in but your talents and gifts must be used to glorify God amen I said amen. amen so don't hide your talent somewhere there's a story in the Bible uh, of somebody who was going for a long journey and he gave talents uh, to his servants one of the servants did not use the talent they went and they hid it somewhere when the master came he was very annoyed with that servant why because they did not use what the master had given them to bring profit so the gift that you have God wants to use it so that you can bring profit in the kingdom so don't don't allow yourself to sit back you have something you can do amen god has put some gifts in you some of you need to be in the media uh doing all the screen work that you see and uh yeah you you are gifted in that you need to be in that department you could be you are on the camera they will train you to do it don't say i'm too small you can you begin to do it now how many know know that this is the time how many of you know this is the time all right so uh make sure that you sit the first thing is we build your faith your love for jesus and then you can use everything that god has given you to glorify his name lift up your hands and receive blessing from the lord I want to ask the church to stretch your hands towards our children. Father, we thank you. We thank you for bringing the children uh, home after their uh, studies in the term that has just ended. I pray that this will be a time for them to do things that will build their faith and build their love for you we protect them from every scheme of the devil we say no to everything the devil would want to do 
to distract them and to make them not fulfill uh, their purpose. We pray this morning that you will bless them and you will uh, do them good because you are a good God. Thank you. Even as we seek to hear your word, Lord, I pray that you will bless these children. Give them revelation. Give them to know you even in this tender, tender age. Thank you and we praise you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's people shout out with amen. Amen. And we are going to make our confession this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. We are all going to say it together with the children. Children, are you ready? Okay, let us say it together. One, two, three, let's say it. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Amen. 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 So I want you to go and take your place. Uh, how many of you came with your Bibles? Let me see. How many of you brought your Bibles? Wonderful. Those of you who didn't come with Bibles, let me see by raise of your hand. Those of you who didn't come with your Bibles, what happened? Do you go to school without a, without a textbook? No. So you don't come to church without the Bible. Your Bible is your textbook. It is the book that you come to church with, okay? So uh, you go sit with your parents and uh, we are going to enjoy the service uh, this morning. Hallelujah. Give our children a big, big hand clap. Majesty, eternal Father, the earth and the heavens are created by your hands. Majesty, majesty, You can praise him if you believe there is no one like him I say if you believe there is no one like him you can praise him. and shall we bow our heads and pray father we thank you 
for bringing us in your house this morning Lord Jesus you say where two or three will gather in your name you shall be there in their midst we know you are here to meet us at the point of our need I pray no one under the anointing of my voice in this building or joining this service through the social media platforms through the television will ever be the same may their needs be met may your word come forth with power to create faith for miracles to happen may we be changed by the truth of your word we bless you we pray for our great nation we thank you lord that you have delivered us from what was coming the uh, predicted el nino and lord you have given us freedom from the destruction that was coming we give you glory because we asked for you to stop it and you have stopped it we give you praise i we pray lord that you are going to give us good rain for good harvest for this is a season to the glory of your great name and may your word come forth this morning like rain to water us so that we may be fruitful we bless you in jesus name we pray and all God's people shout a big amen. 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 Receive your neighbor in the house of God with a smile. Tell them, smile, Jesus loves you. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. In him we live, in him we move. And in him we have our being. There is nothing that is too hard for our God. How many people believe it? Amen. And I promise you this morning, God is going to meet you at the point of your need. He knows what you need. I say God knows what you need. How many people came expecting God to do something? How many people came believing God for something? He will do it for you and more. He will surprise you. He will overdo your desires. Can I have an amen? I'm trying to build your faith so that you may not miss your miracles. I say you may not miss your miracles. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. We welcome everyone this morning in the house of God. Those of you joining us by different uh, uh, medias, we welcome you. I believe God is going to bless you. Your story will be changed forever in Jesus' name. And we're going to go straight into the word of God this morning. If you came with your Bibles, go to, to the book of John chapter 4. John chapter 4, we begin reading from verse 20. John chapter 4, the gospel of John chapter 4 and verse 20. The Bible says, Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me. The hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, underline verse 23 in your Bible. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father 
in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I will speak to you, I am he. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. This morning, I want to talk to you about true worship. I want to speak about true worship. And we're going to look at three things that pertain to true worship. Number one, true, true worship is the worship that is centered on the revelation of Jesus. I'll say it again. True worship is centered on, and the Bible says he needed to go through Samaria. He needed to go through Samaria. Why? Because there was somebody in Samaria that had questions that Jesus needed to deal with. And Jesus comes to the well of Jacob and the Bible says he was tired and therefore he, he relaxed beside the well and sent his disciples away. And when the disciples left, a woman of Samaria came to fetch water. I know you know the story. And so we are going to avoid the story and deal with what we came to deal with. This woman had a need like everyone else. This woman was concerned about which is the place, which is the right place to worship. She wanted to know what is true worship. Many people today because of the many denominations and many religions we have today are confused they are confused about who is the true god they are confused about where is the right place to go to worship and they have got questions that this woman had jesus Knowing that this woman had all these concerns and knowing that through this one woman he could reach the hall of Samaria, he waited for her besides the well and they have a long conversation and finally they reach to the point where they begin talking about worship and the woman says to Jesus we Samaritans go to that mountain to worship you Jews say we should go to Jerusalem to worship so she is asking Jesus should I go to Jerusalem or should I worship on that mountain where we worship Jesus answered in a very powerful way say to the woman woman 
a time is coming when you will neither need to go to Jerusalem nor need to go to that mountain and Jesus says that time when it comes those who seek to worship the father it will not be about the place it will not be about whether is in Jerusalem or is in the mountain of Samaria whether it is in in one location or another location because that is not what is important about worship he said that time is coming when those who seek to worship God who is the father everybody say we worship the father who is God the only true God is our father he is the mecca of the heavens and the earth there are no many gods who are whom we have to choose from you have only one God to worship he is our father he is the God who made the heavens and the earth he is the one that made the the stars and the moon and everything that is there there is no other God all the other gods have a small g because they are not true but the true God is our father he is the maker of the heavens and the earth you can never get to him unless you go through the way Jesus said I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life in John chapter 14 and verse 6 he said no one comes to the father no one comes to this true God except through Jesus you cannot come through this true God by going to a certain church you cannot come to this true God by going to a certain temple is anybody listening to me you cannot come to this true God by going to a mosque you men you can only come to him through the way that he has made and that way is Jesus true worship comes by revelation of Jesus when you know who Jesus is then you can go to the father then you can worship the father in spirit and in truth he said I am the way Jesus is the way to the true worship Jesus you're too quiet now I thought somebody would say amen when you hear something let me hear you say something so that I know you are awake you know it's too early I say Jesus is not he he is the way the way to where the way to true worship the way to the father he said I am the way I am the truth I am the life he's the way he is the way Jesus I'm talking about Jesus if you have to worship to worship God in truth there is no other way I say there is no other way I say there is no other way I say there is no other way Jesus 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 I say Jesus this woman this woman that we have read about was not a Jew she was Samaritan and after talking to Jesus she said I think you are a prophet how many people know that many people think about Jesus that way they think he is a prophet the woman thought Jesus was a prophet but Jesus is going to reveal to her who he is this is you know why she she thought he's a prophet because prophet knows things about people and the woman said give me this water you are talking about he was talking about the water of life eternal life that I will not need to come here to draw and Jesus said go bring your husband 
She said, I have no husband. And Jesus already knew. He said, yeah, you have spoken right. Because you have had five. And you have the sixth one. And the sixth one is not even your husband. She said, ah, you must be a prophet. There is no other way you would know all this. You must be a prophet. Now, he says, ah, and we are told that there is one that is going to come. And when he comes, he will reveal to us all things. He says he is a Messiah. The Savior of the whole world. The Savior of the whole world. This woman says we, are, we hear that there is a Messiah who is called Christ. And when he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus says to her, tells her, the one who speaks to you now is he. Jesus is saying to her, I'm not a prophet. I'm the Messiah. Look at your neighbor. Tell them Jesus is not a prophet. Look at your neighbor, tell them, Jesus is not a prophet. He is not like Jeremiah. He is not like Elijah. He is the Messiah. The Christ. The anointed one. The savior of the world. The only way to the father. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. So for you to worship God in the truth, you must go through the Savior. Why through the Savior? Because God is a holy God. And when man sinned and fell short of the glory of God, man needed a way to get to the Father. And the way to get to the Father was through the death of, of the Savior. One had to die, carry all the sins of the world upon his life. One who had never sinned had to die for the sinners. The sin of the whole world was laid on this man and he died for you and he died for me that he might bring us to God. Can I have an amen? amen. He died for my sin. So when you put your faith in him, you are no longer a sinner. You become a child of God. Your sins are washed by his blood and you are given power to become a child of God. Can I have an amen from somebody? He gives you power to become a child of God. You can become a child of God by going to church. You can become a child of God by being baptized. You cannot be saved by your good works. Oh, I love those few amens, but I'm preaching better than the few amens. I say you, you cannot go to God by being good. Because Romans says all have sinned and they have come short of the glory of God. You cannot fulfill the righteousness that is required to go to heaven by good works. You can only do it by grace. Ephesians 2, it says for by grace, 8 and 9, it says for by grace you are saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. Everyone, everyone to become a true worshiper. You must be washed by the blood of the Lamb. You must become a new creature so that you can approach a holy God. Can I have an amen from somebody? Can I have a big amen from somebody? Salvation is a gift. It is given to whoever believes. Believes. The beginning of John chapter 14, Jesus says, 
let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. He's saying believe in the Father. He says also believe in me. When you believe in Jesus and you believe in, in the Father. He says in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place. I love this one. He is coming. He went to prepare a place for that for the true worshippers. He says, and when I finish preparing that place, I will come back and I will take you so that where I am, there you may be also. Why are we here worshipping God? So that we may be with Jesus. I say so that we may be with Jesus. There is life after death. Look at your neighbor, tell them worship leads us to eternal life. Look at your neighbor on the other side, tell them, neighbor, true worship will lead you to eternal life. And when you receive eternal life, it means even after death, you continue living. Amen. Jesus said, those who believe in me, even though they die, yet will they live. You don't die when you believe in Jesus, you sleep. And you wake up when when he comes he will wake up everyone who has died in the Lord and we will all meet with him in the air and there shall we be with the Lord forever and the Bible says them that have this hope in him they keep themselves pure somebody shout hallelujah he is coming soon and he is coming for the true worshipers he is coming for a church that is worshiping him in the spirit and in the truth and if you are a true worshiper you keep yourself pure wearing the garment of salvation that is not littered So, when you have this revelation, you become a worshiper. You begin to worship him in spirit. In what? In spirit and in truth. Now, the scholars differ. Some think that spirit there is talking about the holy spirit others say no it's not talking about the holy spirit but for me that's not a big deal i'll show you why go to proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27 Proverbs. Read it loudly with, together with me. The spirit of a man is the lamb of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. Read it again. The spirit of a man. is the lamb is the one that the lord uses to investigate what is in the hearts of men how does he do that by the holy spirit and this is why i said the second thing about worship Worship must come from the heart. You worship God in spirit. The spirit of a man is the Lamb of God. The spirit of a man will enlighten his way to bring him to where the Lord is so that he can worship him. The spirit of a man must get connected to the spirit of God because God uses that to search the innermost being of a human being now when you worship God 
in spirit you worship him from your heart when you worship from your heart your heart carries everything it carries your emotions it carries your will in your heart everything good or evil will come from your heart that's why proverbs 4 verse 20 the writer of proverbs says my son give attention to my words incline your ear to my saying do not verse 21 let's go quickly do not let them depart from your eyes keep them where in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh now pay attention listen to me very carefully the heart is the place from where all the issues of life flow from everything if your heart is not filled with truth it will produce evil that's why you have to guard it verse 23 Read it loudly. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Guard your heart. The doorway to your heart is your eyes, is your ears, and it's your mouth. This is why when Jesus saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers who were teaching the people they were putting heavy things out of the traditions of men he told them I think it is in Matthew chapter chapter 15 take us there verse 7 He says, he's talking to them about what they were talking. You, your disciples don't wash their hands, blah, 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 blah. Everything about the physical. And Jesus says, you hypocrites, where well did Isaiah prophesy about you saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But what is wrong? Their hearts are far from me and in vain they worship me teaching as doctrine the commandments of men teaching as doctrine the commandments of men what were they teaching people a lot of things if you don't if you don't wash your hands you are defiled and Jesus says what defiles a man is not what goes into the mouth because what goes into the mouth goes out through somewhere else it cannot defile you verse 19 For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. This is what will flow out of the heart that has been defiled. These are the things. 
things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. These are the commandments of men that they have changed into doctrine. Traditions. Rituals that men create. And I'm here to tell you. You need. To worship God. In truth. From your heart. When you see somebody. Lifting up their hands. And becoming emotional. Don't judge them. You don't know why they are crying. You standing there doing nothing. It's, it is from the heart. That, that worship comes from the heart. And, and, and you cannot take away emotions from true worship. Amen. Amen. This is why we become so happy. And we begin to dance and rejoice. When we think about all the good things that God has done for us. This is a worship from the heart. Somebody say amen. amen. We must worship him from the heart. And our hearts must be filled with the truth. The word of God. We will, we're not just emotional people. We are filled with the word of God. We have been cleansed by the word of God. We know whom we believe. We are persuaded that he is able. The reason why we get excited is because we have, we have known him and he has done things for us. The people who know their God shall be strong. We are not weaklings. We are not men who are, who are living double lives. We live for Jesus. We love the Lord. We serve the Lord. And when we think about his goodness and what he has done for us, we can jump, we can dance, we can rejoice. It is part of true worship. Somebody shout hallelujah. I say somebody shout hallelujah. And so we we get we get into the into the spirit of God and we begin to rejoice. Through worship must be done through the spirit. Why? Because God, Jesus said, God is spirit. In capital. God is what? And those who worship him. They must worship him. In the spirit. And in truth. Those who worship God. True worshipers. Will worship in, in spirit. From their hearts. A heart that is full of truth. I say a heart that is full of truth. So that when you worship him, you worship him. You worship him because you know him. You worship him because you know what he can do. You worship him because you know who he really is. You know worshiping something that is imagination. You are worshiping what you know. He says to the Samaritan woman, you worship what you do not know, but we worship what we know. Hallelujah. Because salvation is to the Jews. Glory to God. And we are grafted in that tree through Jesus Christ. And therefore salvation has now come not only to the Jews, but he has crossed over to the Gentiles, the sons of Abraham by faith. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. I came to, I came to preach this morning. Somebody will, somebody will put our, aside every worship that is dry. When you worship God in truth and in spirit from your heart, from your heart, you forget about your position. Why? Why? Because you know him. 
You can't come to God as a very important person. VIP. That is flesh. Look at your neighbor, tell them that's nothing but flesh. When we come to God, we come to him in humility because he is the greatest. He is, he is the highest. He is greater than the king. Every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess. A man who is a true worshiper of God must forget about what they are in the flesh so that when you come to God you can come in humility you don't come as a director you don't come as a CEO you don't come as a cleaner you don't come ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't come to God by what people call you you come to God like you are coming to your father and you come to him in humility you come to him in honor you honor God you worship God because he is the greatest of the greatest he is the highest of the highest can I have an amen from somebody we honor him this is why he is not only a father but he is a king and he is not just a king but he is the king of kings and he is the lord of lords and he says if i am a father where is my honor you don't come to god with your pride trying to trying to come before him uh, you don't know what kind of a car i came driving god doesn't care about cars he cares about your heart and if you are full of material then you come to God with a pride and if you are full of material and you don't have material you come to God with the humiliation you are being humiliated by what you don't have oh you know I just I just have to sneak in the house of God because I came walking no you don't have to you come tall because you are coming to the house of your father you come tall you come tall you come tall because you're not coming to a man and you're not coming in the flesh you're coming in spirit somebody say i refuse to come to god in the flesh because god is spirit so many people they come to church they are full of the flesh they want to worship in their mind they're calculating everything you never you can never figure out who he is in your heart in your mind he is too big to be accommodated by your by your intellect is anybody hearing me you can only believe you can only believe in him you cannot know him in your head. You can only know him in the spirit. Ay, 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 ay. And when you know him, you serve him with humility. You come before him. Not like you are coming before a God who is an idol. Who men carry around. They place him where they want to place him. That God cannot move from there until they move him. Our God is not like that. You can't touch him because he is spirit. So you can't place him somewhere. And they say it is that place where we will worship him. He is there in that place. He is everywhere. When we come here, we bring him by our worship. We begin to praise him in the spirit and in the truth. We sing and we rejoice in the Holy Ghost 
and when we rejoice in the Holy Ghost he comes because he inhabits the praises of his people you cannot you can't come to church it doesn't matter how good or how, how anointed the place is and you stand there like a stooge God will pass you over you will not know he, he was there somebody say I'm ready for my next level hallelujah you must know him you must know him as your healer it doesn't matter what is happening in your body he is your healer when you know him you worship him and you worship him and you say your word says by the stripes of Christ I am healed therefore this body your word says is the temple of the Holy Spirit it is not a temple of idols it is not a temple of sickness it is not a temple of sin it is not a temple of wickedness is anybody hearing me you tell God this body that you you have put your spirit in is your temple and it is illegal for the devil to try to use it with sickness and disease and therefore you use the authority that he has given to you and you speak like a prophet and you prophesy and you cast a thing out and you tell it in the name of Jesus you have no place in this body this body is not for what you are trying to do when you get annoyed with the devil trying to use God's temple for his own small little things you will be healed without prayer you will stop saying my sickness you know my sickness when it becomes cold this is what happens come on get out of the flesh get into true worship begin to worship God in knowledge in an in truth in truth what does truth say truth says you are healed so you cannot worship God in sickness you say oh Papa I'm already sick you know why you are sick because you have not acknowledged the God you serve acknowledge him as your healer and take that burden to him he says cast uh, cast all your cares and your concerns upon me because i care for you Amen. he wants to carry that sickness jesus died on the cross to take care of that sickness don't don't begin to praise the devil for small little things that is the worship of the devil don't begin to praise him for small little things that he is doing in your body you 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 tell the devil you take your stuff and Go. you need to get annoyed with the devil when the devil is trying to use the temple of God for the wrong things can I have an amen can I have an amen from somebody everything is by grace through faith amen through worship by faith because we are worshiping God who is spirit by grace through faith through faith this is why this is why yes this is why tell my friend I'm talking to him yes I'm talking to you hallelujah this is why when you come to the house of God you cannot be sleepy look at your neighbor tell them neighbor the spirit of heaviness will hinder worship People who don't have the spirit 
even early in the morning they have slept for eight hours but they come to church somebody say that's not my portion say that is not me I am full of God I'm full of the Holy Ghost my mind is a lot my spirit is awake somebody say I'm connected somebody say I'm connected are you just saying it or are you say I'm connected to God through the spirit there is no heaviness in me in me is joy is peace in me is health in me is the peace of God the shalom even when there is trouble I am not troubled by the trouble because I have him who is the way the way out of my trouble somebody shout yes and I'm going to be praying this morning for all who are going to be sitting for their uh, exams this coming week you must win you must you must you must score what you have been praying what you have been planning what you have been thinking what you have been ah uh, yeah 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 ah uh, you are the seed i'm talking to our children you need to become true worshipers of god you can't be a worshiper of god and here you are thinking oh i am i am going to fail because i am not that good the seed of the righteous you must worship God in truth the truth is failure is not your portion if you are in business failure is not your portion if you are a professional mediocrity is not your portion you cannot you cannot be a worshiper of God and here you are you are surrounded by all things that don't look like they come from God You must live by the truth the seed of the righteous shall be mighty somebody say mighty somebody say mighty somebody say mighty so Philippians I close here chapter 3 I'm I'm, I'm getting ready because we're going to get you on track in worship It says verse 3 ah let's start with verse 1 I think I like I like the first verse I wasn't going to be there but I'm going to start verse verse 1 finally my brethren do what tell your neighbor be happy tell them be happy in Jesus forget about everything yeah. Forget about what you have and what you don't have. Just be happy. Rejoice in the Lord. For we write the same things to you. For to write the same things to you is not tedious. For, for what? But for you, it is safe. Verse 2, he says, beware of dogs. Everybody say dogs. Beware of evil workers. Somebody say evil workers. Beware of who? Beware of mutilation. Why? Verse 3. Why? Verse 3. Read it loudly. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. In the spirit. Now, this is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> We, we worship God in the spirit. We worship God in the Holy Ghost. 
rejoice in Christ Jesus. We worship God in the spirit. We rejoice in Christ Jesus. And we have no confidence in the flesh. We are the circumcision of the heart. Who rejoice in Christ. Ay, 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 ay. When you feel, I'm just shocked that people in the church are suffering from depression. How can the Holy Ghost be depressed? Say, that's not my portion. You know how they get depressed? By thinking those things that are not good. Those things that are not lovely. Those not things that are not of good report. When you get a bad report, throw it away. It's not your portion. Or they may give you bad report. You didn't do well in your exam. Throw it away. That, that's not your portion. They may tell you all oh, this and this. Ah, this has happened. Don't carry those things. Rejoice in the Lord. We rejoice in Jesus Christ. We worship God in the Holy Ghost. When you don't know what to say because you don't know what's, you don't even know how to pray. Just you go, Rabbi Andaba Kusikamaya Kataba. Worship him in the spirit. Get out of your mind. We are not of them that have confidence in the flesh. For the flesh availeth nothing. What you are in the flesh is nothing. It can change. But what God does is permanent. You are saved forever. If you are saved, you are saved forever. I want us to stand up. Have you received the word? Are you a true worshiper? You know, this is the reason why when you come to the house of God, you come with reverence. Everybody say reverence. You honor God with everything that is in you because he has given you life. He has given you whatever you have. Whatever you have, it has come from the Lord. How many people believe that? How many people believe that? And that's why when we come to him, we must come in reverence. When we worship him, we must worship him sincerely. From your heart. When you feel like crying, cry. Because, because it is from your heart. Worry about, don't worry about those who, who don't cry. They don't cry because they are hard. You cry because you are soft. And the spirit of God softened us to worship him. And so, so when you are moved to, to do something, don't worry about your neighbor. They, they may not be where you are. And they may judge you and, and the judgment is the Lord's. So when they, when they are judging you, they are misjudging you. And so don't worry about them. Lift up your hands, somebody. And begin to worship him. Begin to tell him that you love him. I say, if you love the Lord, lift up your voice and tell him, I love you, Jesus. I want to hear worshipers who came to worship God. You cannot come before the Lord. You can't come before the Lord in fear. You come before the Lord in faith. Open your mouth. Tell him what you want him to do for you right now. He is here for you. He is here for you. If you are sick, tell him, Lord, this is not my portion. If you are jobless, tell him, Lord, 
I need the door to open for me right now. I need to move to my place. Don't allow the enemy to preach to you negativity. Don't allow sin to have dominion over your life. We love you, Jesus. Jesus. True worship is centered on you. Oh, I love you. I love you, Lord. Rabaka bakosi alaba. Ramarabo bayandaraba. Rarabageta bakosi bandaraba. We come before you. We come before you. Oh God, you are our healer. You are the one that forgives us of our sin. Wash us, cleanse us, purify us. That we may be pure and holy before you. Oh God. Ilabo randa gadiba koraba. It is you that I love, it is you that I give all that I have. Lift up your hands and tell him, Jesus, Jesus you are a burden maybe you are sick in your body maybe you have gotten a bad report from doctors somebody sent me a prayer request here saying they have been diagnosed with brain tumor They need prayer. The doctors can remove the tumors by an operation. But God can remove tumors by a word of faith. How many people know what I say is true? And you may be going through something. You say, I need a miracle. All you need to do is just believe. You can get out of your seat and just come be stand before this altar and lay your burdens on this altar. Leave them here for Jesus. You, you're going through something in life or there is something that you need that the enemy has withheld from you. You can come to God. Those who come to him must believe that he is. He's a present God. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It is you.
standing before God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. He asks what you need, all you need to do is tell him, take it over. Tell, Lord, tell the Lord, take over this situation. Just talk to him in a minute and tell him, tell him what you need, tell him what you have you have come to receive from him. He is a rewarder. He will reward you with what you came for. He will give you what you need right now. Stretch your faith to God. Don't worry about your neighbor hearing what you are saying. Your name, don't worry. That's the flesh. Get out of the flesh and shout. Cry like blind but myers. Cry out to God. Tell him have mercy on me. Don't wait for somebody to lay hands on you. Say, oh God, have mercy. Have mercy on me. He is a good God. Pastors, come and agree with the people. Come and agree with them. Receive your miracle. He's a good
Salabar Kuma yalabako salabaraba Touch you Touch you Break Every work of the enemy Everybody Lift your hands from wherever you are Hallelujah The anointing is so heavy Everybody say thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank him with an attitude. Say thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Tell him I love you Lord. Love you, Lord. you are my deliverer. You are my, deliverer. You, are my healer. you are my healer. You are the source of my life. In you I live. In you I move. And in you I have my being. Mama, why are you walking with a stick? You have pain in your leg and in your back. Your knees. Can you climb the stairs? It's a hard thing to do, isn't it? Okay. Come. Climb the steps. Climb. All right. your legs and see if there is any pain move your legs there is no pain now bend the pain have subsided now I want you to bend now bend all the way down 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 up bend again all the way down 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 Is there pain in your back? It has subsided also. Amen. Nothing, nothing is too hard for God. Amen. Now, now, move your legs quickly now. No pain. Your knees. No pain in the knees. No pain. Amen. So, you will, you will not need this anymore. You will not need it anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. You will never need it anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, give Jesus a big hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mama, go holding. Holding your stick now because you will not need it anymore. Just walk down the stairs, hold our hand, and look at what the Lord Jesus has done. And I know so many people have received their miracles here. I say, I know so many of you have received your miracles. How many people can testify that God has given you your miracle? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give Jesus a big, 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 big. You are totally free. If the enemy had, had taken you captive, you are no longer his slave. Whoever the son sets free is free and free indeed.
Can I have a big amen from somebody who believes? If you had a condition, I send you back to the doctor. I send you back to the doctor. You will know. You will know. I send you back to the doctor for him to go and confirm. Because I'm not a doctor. The doctor sees things by using natural means. We see with the spiritual eyes. We see the doings of the Lord. And we marvel because they are... They are... You cannot explain a miracle. You can't explain a miracle. A miracle is just a miracle. I see doors opening for people. I say I'm seeing doors opening for people. I see doors opening. If you needed an open door, I release you to your open door right now. God is promoting people. God is, God is opening doors that cannot be shut by men. Hallelujah. I see the Lord. I see the Lord. eyes of faith you see him above your situation you see him above above everything you see his masses the king who sits on the throne he is exalted and you may be here this morning a servant of God I need to be forgiven I want to become a child of God I want to be washed by the blood of Jesus I want to be become a member of the family of God you can't become a member of the family of God by going to church you can only be made a member of the family of God by being washed in the blood of Jesus he wants to forgive you he wants to change you you say I need that prayer you may be here or you may be in the congregation let me see by a raise of your hand you say yes I need to be forgiven I want to become a child of God I want my sins to be washed away Thank you, I see your hands here. Thank you so much. Anyone else in the congregation, you've never given your heart, yes? Yes, my sister. God bless you, all of you raising up your hands. Come here at the front. The rest of you go back to your seats rejoicing in the Lord. Pastor Jack, come and lead these that have come. Come and lead them to the Lord. Thank you, Master. I love you. I 
before the Lord uh, you can say this after me say Lord Jesus today I have heard your word I accept I am a sinner I need your mercy say Lord Jesus forgive me cleanse me come into my heart and save me make me a new creation from today I am born again Write my name in the book of life. Help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Just stand where you are. Amen. It doesn't matter what you have, you have done. It doesn't matter how you were living. Now you are a new creature. All your sins are forgiven. Your name has been written in the book of life. Now you have to live by faith. Living by faith is living, believing what has happened has happened because it has happened. If you pray that prayer from your heart, Jesus has come in you. So you say, what do I need to do? Just love him. Live for him. Do what is pleasing to him. Turn away from everything that is of the past because it has passed and everything has become new. Lord, I commit these brethren into your hands none that you have given to me will be taken away keep them O oh god by your word your word is truth you have washed them you have sanctified them fill them with the holy spirit the fear of the lord be their rear guard in jesus name i pray Oh God's people shout a big amen. 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 Go with these people that are standing before you, behind you. They are going to tell you what you need to do now that you gave your heart to the Lord. Just go with them. Hallelujah. I want to pray for all the candidates those who are going to be sitting for their exams together with your parents if you are here <clears throat> you can make your way to the front parents you may have children that are not here Probably they are in school, you can stand in the gap for them. Every time We stand before God. We must come in honor. Hallelujah. Parents teach your children. Every time you come, you need something from God. Bring an offering. Amen. You're not buying. 
what you are asking God is a sign of honor. That's why Israel was taught by God every time you go in his presence, don't go there empty handed. It's just a principle. So I will pray for you and if you have an offering, you can lay it on the altar for your child, for uh, God to go with them in that examination room. There to be an angel to remind them of the things that they have been studying. That's how God lifts his people supernaturally. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for all our children, our sons and our daughters that are going to be sitting for their different exams. Lord, you are not a man. You say, if we abide in you and your word abides in us, we shall ask whatever we will and you will grant it to us. So I pray right now, they are standing here, they want success. The parents are standing here. They are standing to see success for their children. The students are standing here. They want to see success. So Lord, I pray that you grant them the desires of their hearts. I decree under the anointing that their expectation will not be cut off. They will score what they desire and even higher. Every fear that catches people when they have an exam are rebuked. I pray they will walk into that examination room in confidence knowing that we have prayed, knowing that they are entering there with an angel, an invisible guider who will guide them as they do the exams. We thank you. We worship you. In Jesus' name. And all God's people shout a big amen. Amen. Go and, go and succeed. Go and do well. Go and score. According to the desires of your hearts. Amen. So if you brought uh, an offering, lay it on the altar and you can go back to your seat. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is time to give our tithes and our offerings unto the Lord. I say it's time to give our tithes and offerings unto the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you are giving from your, from your phone, you need to receive an offering uh, envelope from the ashes you're giving you a tithe you need to take a tithe envelope and put your name on it This is the last week of our 
vows that we made before the Lord, the, revive, uh, the revival seed, uh, the work, as you can see, is going on, and God is counting on us for his work not to be hindered. I thought somebody would say amen. So if you made a vow for the five months giving, this is the last month. Make sure that you fulfill your vow as you do it. My God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. Today is our family day. Look at your neighbor, tell them it's our family day. And so on this day, we receive an envelope to give. An offering for our children. It is very important that regularly we are living in very, very, very evil days. Our children are targets of the enemy. You need to lay something every month on the altar with the names of your children so that that the power of God that operates in this altar will watch over your children wherever they are so we write the names of the children every one of them by their name so if you have got three children you take three envelopes each one for your child. We bring this offering in the evening for our, uh, our family service. We give that special offering for our children during our family service and the Lord will bless you. All the parents, if you need to put, it's very important. I think everybody should do it I do it. You don't say my children are grown up. They are still your children. Every month I put, my, I connect my children to this altar because I know the devil would want to do stuff for the children of the people of God. I'll ask mama to come and pray for the offering. Lift the offerings before the Lord as we pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house this morning. And thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for healing. Thank you for saving. Thank you for delivering. Thank you for touching lives. Everyone at the point of their need. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. We honor you, O oh Lord. And at this time... We come before you as you have commanded us that we should not come before you empty-handed. We have seen you do great things and in our hands we bring our offerings, we bring our vows, we bring our first fruits, our seeds. Lord, we pray that you will accept them, that they will be before you a sweet-smelling fragrance that will attract a blessing in everyone's life. Lord, I pray that we will be an evidence of God's blessings when people look at us. We thank you, Lord. You have been faithful 
You have been merciful. You have been so good. We have experienced your grace. And we just want to thank you. Receive them. And let everybody reap the benefits of their giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So if you, you brought your vow, come lay it on the altar. And the Lord is going to bless you. If you brought your tithe, come and lay it on the altar too. Your offerings will be collected from where you are by the, by the ashes. How many people are excited about the development that is going on in this property? How many people are really excited? Can we celebrate the Lord for what is happening? I'm telling you, I cannot wait uh, to see what I have seen uh, on the 3D uh, of the finished balconies I tell you uh, my goodness is that how they look like can you see how the balconies will look like Oh my goodness. Wow. It will make this place completely. When you walk into this place, you will be very proud of what God has done for us. Somebody say amen. And it is all happening because of your faithfulness, uh, your Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, we are going to see this in a few weeks. It will not be a picture. You will take your own picture of this looking like that. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. So I, I want to remind everybody, every big thing that happens, happens because there are people that are willing to pay a big price for it. And I want to thank all who have already fulfilled the vow they made. Can we give them a big hand clap? You know, uh, when, when they are buying the materials and everything, uh, 
they pass through me they say uh, we need this then I see those big checks uh, and I say wow but when accounts don't have the money they call me they say Papa what are we going to do uh, the materials are needed I don't keep I don't keep account so I don't I don't I have just to be told there is money or there is no money <laughs> I don't know anything beyond that and when there is no money they tell me how are we paying this when there is money they just bring me a check they say sign here but when there is no money they say Papa how are we going to pay this one how would you how would you answer that if you were if you were ask your neighbor neighbor if you are wearing papa's shoes the people who keep money they know there is no money and they come to papa to ask him how it is going to be paid i hope you don't envy my position because it is i would i would surrender to you right now and give it to you so that nobody ask me those questions. But it is always a joy to see God work miracles. And as you honor your vow, God, I am saying God, will supply miraculously for you those that have been closed for a long time they are going to open this week somebody shout hallelujah I'm being asked to to take an offering for the bus and I will not you know why because we are going to do it in a big way like we always do kwa hivyo mjitarishe on sunday we are going to give a big offering for our bus ministry somebody wave your hand and shout hallelujah i say somebody wave your hand and shout hallelujah and uh, finally stand up on your feet we are going home Did you receive one of these? Did anybody receive one of these? If you are a lady and you know, say amen. amen. I love that lady's voice. If you are a lady and you know, say amen. amen. Now that amen is to say you are going to be here on Saturday. Let me hear a big amen about that too. So all the ladies on Saturday, this coming Saturday, is the final uh, supernatural Saturday. It is the final one for 2023. And it is going to be very, very powerful. I heard that the ladies are supposed to remain Am I right? So the ladies will remain shortly after this. Lift your hands to heaven. We are all coming back. As you lift up your hands, you are saying, I'm coming back. Lift up your hands and say, I'm coming back for the family service. Uh, lift up nicely, say, I'm coming back for the family service. And the devil can do nothing about it. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. I cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. I speak God's protection over everyone today. Lord, as we leave this place, keep us, O oh God, in prayer. May we become what you have called us to be. 
May this coming week, O oh God, be a week that we will all be in the house of God early in the morning for prayer. Let the weakest among us, O oh God, be like David. The angel that guards this house, may he give everyone victory. And as we begin the three days of prayer and fasting, Father, I pray that you will give us strength and we will congregate here and glorify your holy name. For surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Remember our prayer and fasting starts tomorrow all the way to Wednesday and we are gathering every evening here. God bless you. Shalom everybody. It's another time at the end of the year and you know what? At the end of the year we have our leaders conference word explosion. It's happening so you need to get ready to come. 